Hello again. In the last year, between 1 and 2% of young adult males in Albania, about 10,000 of them, have entered Britain illegally. Everybody knows this, and Dan O'Mahony, Border Force Clandestine Threat Commander, has even spoken to the press about the problem. In total, 30,000 people, almost all of them young men of military age, have crossed the English Channel this year and entered Britain illegally. I'm sure that those who have looked at photographs of the so-called asylum seekers landing on the southeast coast of this country will have noticed for themselves how there are very few women and children among them. There are a couple of points to consider here, not least the hideous expense of the whole enterprise. In February, just eight months ago, it was revealed that the daily cost of housing asylum seekers and, and the Afghans whom we brought here after the fall of Kabul was about £5 million a, year, a day. We now learn from something casually mentioned at a select committee hearing that this has gone up to almost £7 million a day. £7 million a day. That is £2.5 billion a year, a very large sum of money. And yet, when we're talking of cuts in public expenditure, the question of old age pensions is on the table again. People who have paid into the system all their lives might be deprived of money, but heaven forbid that we should economise on hotels for illegal immigrants. In the long term, we might ask ourselves what the implications are for the future. One of the things which we have been economising on is, of course, the British Armed Forces, and they are now a tiny fraction of what they once were. In the 1960s, there were around 400,000 people serving in the United Kingdom Armed Forces. Today, we have just 148,000. Our armed forces are shrinking fast, and yet the number of young foreign men of military age in the country is rising rapidly. I find this a little disturbing. Not only is this country no longer strong enough to fight a war, it will soon not even have enough men to deal with an internal conflict like Northern Ireland. Of course, in an emergency, we have always fallen back on conscription, which enables us to lay our hands quickly on four million or so soldiers and sailors. But what happens if a large proportion of those whom you hope to call up are foreigners who owe no allegiance to this country? How will that work? The situation is getting worse with every passing day, and yet nobody in the government wishes to confront it. We are crossing our fingers and hoping that nothing will happen to draw too much attention to this. What do viewers think will happen if Britain were to get drawn into a European war because of our involvement in Ukraine and membership of NATO? Does anybody really think that we can rely upon the hundreds of thousands of young foreign men to defend this country? Or do they perhaps ask themselves uneasily which side these people would be on if there were a war? Suppose we find ourselves facing a Muslim country on the battlefield, as has already happened in recent years. Will they form a fifth column within our country during an international crisis? As usual in the description to this video, I give links to information about what I have been saying here. 